Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about five obscure compositions that I want to hear right now. Now, as with previous entries in this series, these are not necessarily the best obscure works, although I'm going to argue that at least two of these really do need to be heard. These are just the ones I want to hear right now. So let's take a look. So at number five, we have The Symphony by Jan Václav Voracek. Yes, a contemporary of Schubert's. And in fact, if you look at the notices of the time, there were some newspapers who said that he was as good as Schubert. I think that's overstating things, but you can take a look for yourself. There was a nice recording out, Scottish National Chamber Orchestra, Sir Charles McCarris. By the way, McCarris, an underrated conductor, I like just about everything that he does. I think he probably got painted with that brush about being a part of that period instrument movement. And yes, there are period instrument elements in what Macaris did, but it was always well thought out and it, he wasn't dogmatic about it. He borrowed elements from period instrument performance practice and used them where he felt was appropriate. And even when I hear a performance that I don't necessarily agree with from him, it's always worth hearing because I know that it's been well thought out. This is a nice symphony in the grand European tradition. Might as well be a symphony from, you know, from a Mendelssohn type of symphony. Now, having said that, I think the work is overrated. Boy, I'm going to get in trouble for saying that. I think it really only comes alive in the last movement or so, but I don't think it's a masterpiece, but this is something that you need to hear, and every once in a while, I pull this off the shelf because, you know what? I need to hear that right now. Now, at number four, we have what is probably the least obscure work on this list. It is Wagner's early Symphony in C. Written while he was very young, he was only in his early 20s when he wrote it, it is the only symphony he ever wrote. And it's full of youthful ardor and vigor and optimism and energy. In other words, it was everything that Wagner would not become later in life. You know, Wagner wrote these long operas, you know, three, four hour operas ending with the twilight of the gods. And this one doesn't quite fit the narrative. So for some reason, I think that's part of it. Critics like to look down on this work and it's also a very youthful work, but you shouldn't overlook this thing. It's been recorded a couple of times and there's a very good performance on YouTube that I am going to link below and you should listen to it because I want to hear this too right now. You know, not long ago I was somewhere and there was some music playing in the background and I remember thinking to myself, this is a European romantic symphony and I don't know what it is. I thought I kind of knew most of them. What is that? Well, it turned out it was the Symphony No. 1 by Florence Price. And I'm really glad to see this because there is a recording that is out and I'm glad to see that she's getting her due. Major conductor, major orchestra, major label hopefully her music will get exposed to more people. Florence Price, brilliant musician, grew up in the South, smart woman, valedictorian of her class, wanted to be a doctor, but knew in reality this was not going to be possible as a black woman living in Arkansas. So she moved up North and made most of her work in the Chicago area. Now, not long ago, they discovered a lot of her work that was almost thrown away. It was in what is described as a dilapidated residence. And they went inside and they found many works there and almost thrown away. We almost lost them. But these are grand symphonies in the romantic tradition. And they've got a little bit of that 20th century influence in them. I'd like you to hear, if you want to hear any excerpt from it, try the scherzos. She doesn't call them scared so she calls them something else, but they sound like orchestrated Joplin rags, full of toe-tapping little melodies, really fine works. These are two terrific symphonies, and you should hear them right now. I don't like 20th century music. How often do we hear that? You know, it's, we don't know if the tonality is there, we have all these strange sounds coming out of the orchestra. I don't like 20th century music. Well, you'll like this one. Ernest Bloch's Concerto Grosso No. 1. It's in a terrific recording. Howard Hansen is the conductor. It's on a Mercury Living Presence CD or LP. You are in good hands. It's only 18 minutes long, and 
When it's over, you're going to wish it kept going on. This is a terrific work. It's in five movements. None of them are very long, and it's full of energy and exuberance, and it's tuneful, and you're going to feel really good when this is over. So this is a work that I need to hear right now a lot. So here's my vote for number one, the symphony by Wilhelm Blodek. Yes, a Czech composer. You know, to me, it's criminal that this thing isn't more well-known. This should be played as a romantic symphony as often as the Brahms symphonies or the Tchaikovsky symphonies. Yes, it is that good. Try to listen to this whole thing, especially towards the end, without wanting to throw your hat into the air at the end. It's a skillfully constructed symphony, everything that a romantic symphony should be. Again, it's criminal. I can't even find a recording of it, but there is something on YouTube which I'm going to link below, and I'm going to listen to this as soon as this is over, and you should too. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and recommend two books. The first one is Galena's book. This is terrific. It's a big book. If you're looking for something that's going to take up a lot of your time, this is almost 400 pages worth. Now, it is a bit difficult reading because it is a translation, but it's worth poking in and out of. I didn't read this cover to cover. I kind of dipped in and out of it. And what she has to say, for example, about Shostakovich alone is worth the price of admission. Here's the other book you should check out. 100 Miracles by Zuzana Ruzikova. Yes, if you know your Bach, Ruzikova made over 100 recordings. In fact, she made the first complete traversal of Bach's keyboard works. She did it on the harpsichord. I bought this book thinking that it was a book about music. It actually turned out to be a Holocaust book. This is not easy reading, and part of the reason it is not easy reading is because she is such a good writer. She makes you relive everything about what was happening back then. The book opens with her on a train. She boards a train, and somebody on board tells her to go to the back of the train. Doesn't say, but presumably it's because she's Jewish. The train gets into an accident. At the time, it was the worst railway disaster that the Czech Republic had ever experienced. Something like 180 people died in it. The people who died were in the front of the train, but she survived because she was in the back of the train. That opening story is a parable for everything that happens after this. She survived so many scrapes with death. I don't know how she did it. I think most of us probably would have perished if we had to live through what she did. Survived three concentration camps, including Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen. Now, when she gets to Auschwitz, they're given a code. All of the people there are given some kind of a code, and she didn't know what that was, couldn't figure it out. Well, eventually she did figure it out. The code was the date that they were going to do away with them. This is how the Germans had organized things. And she figured, when she finally did figure this out, that date's coming up really soon. And would have perished, except her date was June 6, 1944. D-Day. D-Day saved her. <laughs> And so she gets out there, out there, but then she's sent to a German work camp and then winds up in Bergen-Belsen, which is the worst possible place you could have been. You know, at, at least in Auschwitz, they were feeding the meager portions, but in Bergen-Belsen, they just kind of stopped doing that altogether. I think they probably figured it was just a waste of resources. But the end of the war saves her from being exterminated in Bergen-Belsen escapes that, goes back to her town in the Czech Republic, and she finds that nobody will meet her gaze, people sort of look away, nobody's friendly to her, and she couldn't figure out what was going on. Well, she gets back to her house, and somebody else is living there. Then she's looking around, and people are wearing her clothes. You see, they didn't expect her to come back, so after a while, they just kind of took her things, and it wasn't that they hated her, they were just ashamed at what happened survives that, builds up her life, gets married, and winds up producing all of these wonderful works. So I highly recommend 100 Miracles, very aptly titled by Susanna Ruzikskova. So there you have it, folks. Five obscure compositions that I want to hear right now, plus two books. I hope this has given you some material that you can seek out yourself. I hope you do. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.